the middle of the North and South American landmass lies Venezuela, a country which only recently has emerged from a 400-year history of colonialism, exploitation, and poverty. Early settlement of Venezuela began in the Andean and coastal ranges of the northern part of the country. In the early 1600s, the first cities and towns were founded here. The mountain areas provided a cool climate and the fertile valleys could grow a wide variety of subtropical crops. Venezuelan cities and towns developed in the Spanish style brought by the colonists from the old world. Beautiful cathedrals, many of which can still be seen today, reflected the strong position of the church in the society of the time. This feudalistic culture persisted for centuries in Venezuela. It was composed of two widely separate classes, a rich landed aristocracy and a much larger peon class that tilled the soil and performed the menial tasks required on the large estates. Primitive agricultural methods persisted well into the 20th century, as the fertile but small mountain valleys were not suited to modern large-scale farming. But Venezuelans had little choice. Across the southern peaks lay a region of great plains or llanos, which stretched to the horizon. No worthwhile crops would grow here. At the edge of this vast, infertile area was the great Orinoco River. In the rainy season, it overflowed its banks, flooding hundreds of square miles. Beyond the Orinoco was the vast and unpopulated section of the country the Venezuelans call Guayana. This region was covered with thousands of square miles of almost impenetrable jungle, which teemed with wildlife. But the jungle soils of Guayana, like the Llanos, were unsuitable for agriculture. The whole area lay almost untouched for centuries. Even Angel Falls, the highest waterfall on Earth, was not discovered until 400 years after the first Spanish settlement of the North. For centuries, in their poor and remote villages, most of the people lived quiet lives close to the soil. Then, in the early 1920s, something happened which changed forever the life of the Venezuelan people. Oil. On December 14, 1922, an oil well being drilled near Lake Maracaibo blew out at the rate of 100,000 barrels a day. It continued for a week before being brought under control. Today, Venezuela is one of the largest exporters of petroleum in the world. Over three million barrels a day come from the huge deposits under Lake Maracaibo. The oil companies are largely North American owned, but the workers are mostly Venezuelan. They are men like Juan Ramirez, who has been an employee of a major oil company for almost 20 years. Mr. Ramirez works on an oil barge which drills and services the wells. Each day he reports to work by motor launch to relieve personnel already on duty. The barges work around the clock. Mr. Ramirez is a foreman. He supervises operations on the barge during his shift. Juan Ramirez has worked long and well for his company, and it in turn has provided many benefits for him and his large family. The Ramirez family lives in a modern community planned and built by the oil company. On his way home from work, Juan Ramirez passes the attractive homes which the company sells to its workers at prices they can afford. He often stops at the playground to see which of his many children are there. Pancho! Oil workers like Juan Ramirez, with their high salaries and many company benefits, 
have achieved a way of life which is very similar to that of workers in the most advanced countries of Europe and North America. Lucia Ramirez, an older daughter of the family, attends a local school which was built with funds provided by the oil company and the nearby town. The school is run by the Catholic Church in the community. Except that the Spanish language is used, classroom work is very much the same as in the United States. The taxes on the oil paid by the companies have created great wealth. The money is being used by the government for the development of the entire country. But most noticeably, in Caracas, the nation which is now one of the great cities of the world. It continues to grow and build at a rate which rivals the great cities of North America. Situated in a valley in the coastal range, Caracas enjoys year-round spring-like climate. A modern system of superhighways bears a mounting flow of traffic, reflecting the prosperity of the new middle class. Raul Garcia is a member of this growing middle class of Caracas. He lives in one of the many attractive residential areas of the city. Mr. Garcia is a development expert who works for the Venezuelan government. He takes great pride in the modernization of his country. He can see examples of it on all sides. But Raul Garcia, like other thoughtful Venezuelans, realizes that his country's oil wealth has also created problems. For faster than new apartment houses can be built, more poor people from small towns and rural communities stream into Caracas, seeking jobs in the booming city. They have covered the hillsides with their tiny shacks and crudely built houses. Life for the teeming thousands of people who live in these ranchos, as they're called, is difficult and yet they do the best they can, constantly working to improve their lives. Maria Sanchez came to Caracas three years ago. She and her husband are raising their family here, far from the mountain village where they were born. Her husband Pablo came first and began to construct a simple shack like many that still can be seen in his neighborhood. Having no money, he, like his neighbors, used whatever scrap he could find. Through the years, having found part-time work as a taxi driver, he gradually improved and enlarged his simple home, while Maria worked hard to make life bearable for her growing family. Someday, if they're fortunate enough and work hard enough, the Sanchez family hopes to have a home like their neighbors, perhaps even a second-hand car. Not all the residents of these ranchos have been so fortunate. Thousands of unemployed people live here in conditions of extreme poverty. Venezuelans realize that something must be done at the highest levels of government to create more employment throughout the country. Raul Garcia works for a department of the government which believes it has an answer. The opening up of the vast undeveloped area to the south. Many good locations. Part of his job is to convince Venezuelan and foreign businessmen to build new plants and factories there. He frequently sends his visitors to personally inspect the new development area, which offers great hope for the entire country. The visitor will be welcomed by Jose Fernandez. He works in Guayana City at the center of the greatest undertaking in Venezuelan history. The challenge is the development of the entire Guayana region, a task which many experts around the world are watching with great interest. For Guayana City is being developed at the very heart of a region whose riches were unknown to past generations. There are oil and natural gas fields in the nearby El Tigre area. Both minerals and hydroelectric power 
are available in great abundance in the Guayana heartland. Cattle and important food crops could flourish in the rich soil of the Orinoco Delta. Finally, the Orinoco itself is a great highway for the shipment of goods to all parts of the world. We're to take advantage of the region's great potential. The city, already a thriving community of almost 300,000 people, is growing rapidly. Capital, derived from the country's oil wealth, is being put to work developing Guyana's vast resources. From Guyana City, the first stage of the huge Guri Dam has been completed. Hydroelectric power is already being sent to communities as far away as Caracas. When the third and last stage of the construction is completed, the dam will be one of the largest in the world. The reservoir is already of enormous size. Not far away are the vast mining operations at Cerro Bolivar. The famous Iron Mountain is believed to be the largest single iron ore deposit in the world. Iron from Cerro Bolivar and power from the Guri Dam are supplying the immense national steel plant in Guayana City. This and other basic industries in the city are now providing jobs for thousands of workers. As these industries continue to grow, they will lessen the country's dependence on oil and help build other domestic industries. In the Orinoco Delta, the mighty river divides into dozens of smaller streams, which cut through rich alluvial soil deposited there by the river. Dikes and dams are now being built to control the seasonal flooding which has made this potentially rich farmland useless. Gradually, good land is being opened up to Venezuelan farmers. Fruits, vegetables, and beef cattle are now being successfully raised in small but growing areas of the Delta. The Delta area is still remote and difficult to reach from Guayana City. But bridges and modern highways will soon be built and many of the old ways of life, born of poverty and isolation, will disappear. Already, as the Guayana experiment continues, thousands of formerly unemployed people are working at many different skilled and semi-skilled jobs. Many who could neither read nor write have been given instruction and training by development workers and are now able to hold well-paying jobs. In order to provide for the needs of these workers, the government and private builders are constructing many hundreds of small homes each month to house the newcomers to the city. As Guyana City continues to grow, whole new industries have sprung up to supply the needed materials, providing more jobs in an expanding spiral of development. At the office of the development agency in Guyana City, there is constant activity. For many people, like Jose Fernandez, are working hard to solve the problems of their city and region. They have already created a thriving community at the edge of the South American heartland. And the vast and still undeveloped area of southern Guyana remains as a challenge to even greater effort. Venezuela has been blessed with a great supply of natural resources. It also possesses a hard-working population proud of its racially mixed heritage. Many of the old ways of life are disappearing as the country continues to build one of Latin America's first modern industrial nations. The dream of Simon Bolivar, the country's founding father, at last seems possible of attainment. It was a dream of a free, prosperous, and self-governing people in the land of his birth. 